What yeah. are we here for? What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Looking for information <coughs> that in helps encourage people to understand that. Well, yeah, you, you know, can and we can fight. We can start from the basic concept of you know knowing your rights and uh, how that applies to the difference between right, the right to travel and the uh, uh, privilege of driving. Some yeah. people don't know those. Yeah, so people want to know and understand uh, there's something they can do besides getting const Accost. constantly accosted and given a bill of a mm -hmm. tainer mm -hmm. to uh, pay a bill constantly. Right. And that's what really gets some people, like myself, has got me just uh, tired of tired of paying the bill all the time. I mean, you don't know what'll happen. You're going to get a, a tail light out, and they're going to look for something else. And you weaved over into the yellow line or the white line on the other side, and you broke a, a law, a statute. You're finding we're finding out there's just statutes. So, so you've had some experiences. Yeah, I've had some experiences. You've had some experiences. Your experiences, though, recently have just been, maybe you're just finding friendly officers. <laughs> I don't, so it's been ten times of friendly officers, oh. I guess, from now. So there's been ten friendly officers, which is probably unlikely, in a row. <laughs> so you're assuming possibly that they have, well, I the last officer that I was stopped by was a highway patrolman, and he said, I asked him point blank, I asked him when it was all done and he handed me his ticket, which which is okay now, it seems to be stalled in the court, but he handed me his ticket and he said, I asked him, so do you know who I am? He says, yes, uh, we've heard of you. Well, my little brother got stopped for uh, no registration, no driver's license, taillights weren't working. Or no insurance, and they said, well, your dad is Gary and your brother is Chris. We're not here to waste our time today, so just try to take care of this sometime and let him go. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> anyone else I know would have walked away with like a, at least a thousand dollars in fines, I think. So yeah, so it's a real good likelihood that it pays off to um, stand up and make the courts, um, the courts just want to make money. They're, that's what they are. They're a commercial entity. They want to make good money and they don't want people who waste their time. And so far it's they fishing. found... They're fishing for a, an easy, yeah, an they, easy fish. They probably tell fry. themselves, this is an easy fish to fry, let's just move along. And they tell their officers and on their screens that are in their off cars, cop, you know, squad cars. It says, uh, warning, you know, unless you got a, a real crime here, maybe leave these people. We don't know what it says, but the, the outward evidence is there's something happening out there. Mm -hmm. Helps in your local county. It doesn't always help in, if you're traveling abroad, you know, they may not know you. And we don't go around purposely breaking even the stupid laws. We try to follow the law, you know, all the nonsense, mm -hmm. but every now and then you don't know that your taillights are out or your registration got expired or whatever. Yeah. And uh, it's at least nice not to be getting a thousand dollar fine all the time. Yeah. Tell us about the, uh, the last thing that you had, the time you got stopped. The last one I had was just actually a couple of weeks ago. and. I was driving, traveling, excuse me, and uh, I really, he was actually really friendly, he came up, and this is um, most of the experience, or I should say older experiences I had, the cops were ruder and ruder and ruder as it went back um, in this area, just walk up with license, registration, proof of insurance, and not always, but some of them worse than others of course but this one came up and just identified himself so I'm here with the sheriff's department and I noticed your taillights weren't working and I was like really I so I said well I'm gonna get out and check that out so I got out and looked and they weren't working and so he 
Well, then he asked, well, can I see your driver's license? And normally that's when I start giving him grief right then. But I thought, well, I'll just, I have a driver's license from North Dakota. I'll give him. So I gave him the driver's license from North Dakota. And, but I said, but be sure and run the plates because that's who I am in Washington. And don't want you to, you know, because I know I got a record over here that they can look at. I don't know what it says in North Dakota yet. But, uh, so he ran the plates and then he, he was back there for like 10 minutes or something, just looking on the computer. Long. And he came, long. huh? That's long. <laughs> yeah, and then he came up and he said, well, oh, by the way, your brights are on too, he said. <laughs> and he said, uh, um, well, I was going to stop, I, he said, he just started being friendly and kind of joking around. He's like, well, I was going to say I stopped you for running a skidoo because I was towing a trailer with my snowmobile on it. He's like, I'm a Polaris kind of guy, so. And I was like, what? Oh, and I laughed, you know, okay, got it. And he laughed. And then he said, well, you should, uh, I noticed your driver's license is expired. You should maybe think about getting that taken care of. But you did give me a North Dakota one, so I'll just use that and he said well your registration on your trailer is expired I'm like yeah I know I'm not really that worried about it it's don't really use it much and he's like well you should think about getting that taken care of and he said maybe put your hazards on and he didn't ask for any more information and he just said have a nice day so I took off <laughs> that was the most recent one but there's been ten other times like that even where I ran from him Ran? Yeah, a little ways, and then I pulled off, and he's like, man, I thought you were going to lead me on a merry chase, and he like, goes and looks on the thing, and then, oh, have a nice day, sir, you need to get some insurance and stuff. And, oh, really? Yeah. And uh, it's been, I mean, multiple times, like I said, I've been counting ten times now. But this is because way back you have gone through the court system pretty hard and even was arrested. And the prosecutor would come lying to you court. Filed, you filed criminal complaints against officers, and even though they did go through the gamut with you, they you must have been pretty hard on them. Well, I, mean, I kind of, there's something that I figured out, and I just figured this out the other day. I tried to catch this wild cat. Actually, I did. I caught him. I put him in the cage. I just put a little, put food in there, and I put a string on the door to this little cage and I pulled the string when he went in there to get the food you know so I got over and I said well I'm going to tame this cat <laughs> this happened while Megan was gone so I I said I'm going to tame this cat and uh it'll be our pet <laughs> and so then I put on these big gloves and I I just grabbed him and he's like Rawr! clawing and biting and clawing and biting for like 10 minutes you know and every He'd slowly start calming down, then he'd just come back and start biting and clawing. And, and I, while I'm sitting there thinking, I was thinking of when these cops were beating the crap out of me, and I was like not giving them the information they wanted. Just, I'm remaining silent. And uh, after a while, I was starting to be like, I don't want to deal with this cat anymore. He's, he's not stopping this, he's just keeping on going. And I started thinking, man, that's a lot like what I did. Maybe a lot of it was just the hassle of dealing with me or my dad. So I was thinking while I was, finally I just took the cat and I just like threw him as far as I could and I was like, I don't wanna, I guess I don't want a pet after, I'm not gonna tame this cat. And I kinda equated that with, well that's, I was learning something while I was holding this cat. I was like, man, maybe that's kinda what they were thinking. They were like, we're gonna tame this guy and he's gonna give us money. It's like stealing the lunch money from the, the, the bully stealing the lunch money, you know. After a while, if you don't give it up, I guess, and you fight with the bully, I guess they decide not to harass you so much. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, there was a lot of going to court and fighting him and the prosecutor coming whining to court about me. And then one time I did plea. It was an e they just gave me a 24 hours community service. <laughs> And they were trying to give me a year for driving without a license. And then a probation violation for not giving information. They call it obstructing justice, which I did beat. 
one time, lost another time. But it shows all that stuff on the record when they pull it up. Um, so, I guess. It just seems like maybe they decided to throw the cat as far as they could away and not get clawed and bitten so much, or, or at least try not to. As more and more people are uh, learning about their rights and what to say, what not to say, are is it your experiences from the ones that have uh, stopped you recently that uh, maybe the cops are getting the idea that uh, you know people have rights and they need to know that treading on them also brings you know lawsuits, Title 42, stuff like that. Well, I definitely have noticed a difference in their attitude, a big difference, a huge mm -hmm. difference from just, and I have changed the way, the first few times when I dealt with them, I was just a complete smart aleck, and, um, you know, basically not showing respect, and I have changed that and tried to give them respect and expect respect, and they seem like they do better definitely than with that than challenging their manhood, I guess, or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's also a lot easier than not to uh, uh, give them respect when they're being respectful to you instead of coming across with this authoritative bullying yeah. figure, you know. Yeah, so I've noticed definitely, at least in my experiences with uh, the police recently, that they have gotten a lot more respectful around here and it's nice to see that in this county I've gone to other counties and I had a cop just in Montana last year try to get me just for a speeding ticket just for going five over he was like well he hadn't ran any information yet he just took my license registration he's like you need to get out and come sit in my car with me I was like what I have a witness here I don't have a witness there anything that he says, and now I'm dead, so but maybe, he, oh, he pulled the gun, I had to kill him, whatever, there's no witness if I'm in his car, so I just, after he walked away, he said, just come on out and get in my car with me, and I rolled down the window, and I said, excuse me, sir, is there any law requiring me to do that, and he's like, no, but I'm going to give you a ticket if you don't, <laughs> so he threatened me, and I said, well, I'm going to stay right here where I feel safe, and I have a witness, and he's like, I'm going to give you a ticket then. He just went and wrote me a ticket. Whoa. But uh, then there was another time just... Uh, so I don't know if they can't see on the record in other states or what. That's why I told that cop mm -hmm. just the other day to look at my license plate and run that. Because these guys didn't... I got another one in Montana just recently and they... Uh, they... They didn't know who I was at all. But anyways, they... Um, but it does, here definitely, I've noticed a change in their attitude, and it's nice to see. So, you can change your county, and we can change our country one county at a time. Okay. Now, just to digress a little bit, back when I was a teenager in Montana, it was standard operating procedure for the highway patrol to actually invite you back to sit in a car, and I mean, they were friendly, and, and I mean, that was just... You know, they sat in the front seat, in the passenger seat, you know. Mm, that's, what, that's what this one was. Yeah. I think he was expecting me so to do that. If, but if I they're doing enough. that, if they're offering that now, then obviously they're returning back to the kinder, gentler days. So who knows for sure. Yeah, maybe. And yeah. I just, I was, I was uncomfortable with it. And I thought, well, <clears throat> I'm not going to yeah. go where I don't have a witness. <laughs> but yeah. tell me about your experiences. Well, I think what I'm learning more and more is the concept of the, the Fourth Amendment, mm -hmm. which is uh, just being on a conversation this afternoon with somebody from Illinois who, who's, a lot of folks are trying to figure out how to deal with these issues right from where it always occurs with us, usually at a traffic stop. You can start learning an awful lot right at the traffic stop, how to deal with officials. And uh, so I'm learning 
that this the, the your fourth amendment is a very key important inform, uh, um, thing and that is that you have the right to your person even from these things your person, your papers, your property, and your effects. And so over and your here, car, over there, yeah, your car, and the your right to your person, anything in your pockets, or over in the glove compartment. And so when an officer stops me, I'm beginning to understand more that what we need to recognize need. is that the officer, you know, he needs to identify himself. Because he can, you can go down to Walmart and pick up a, a badge and a blue suit and press it. Well, I mean, you can put lights on the back here. You can watch a movie, and it doesn't mean that Brad Pitt is suddenly a cop yeah. just because he's in a suit and a gun and a car. So they have to identify themselves, and these are all laws the state has: peace officer identification card. Yeah, they're supposed to have a peace Oath officer of identification office. card in their pocket. And and you don't have to show them anything. To, and actually, that cop, I didn't tell the rest of that story for it and and uh, he said well let me go get that for you and then I told him I wasn't going to hassle him since he wasn't hassling me so well they're required to carry that they are because uh, there has been cases where an uh, officer was put on the witness stand and he was asked do you have your peace officer identification card and he goes no in fact I uh I had it uh, put on my wall framed. and framed. Case was dismissed because he has to ad be identified as an officer. Well, and it comes he because I think Ted Bundy used to uh, pretend to be a cop and stop people and tell them, or women, and tell them that he had, there was an outstanding warrant mm -hmm. and then he'd arrest them or whatever. So. The states were like, well, you have to be able to, you don't have to show them anything until they identify themselves, and here's what they have to have, a peace officer ID card. So an officer, so when you're being stopped by an officer, he needs to identify himself. You have that right to ask that. And, but also, we, we, we're requiring that he have an oath. If he is an officer, he has an oath, or he understands the oath. At least if he understands the oath, but what is he that? should understand your rights in that oath is the Fourth Amendment right. So everything, your person, your papers, your properties and effects, you have the right to those things and not to be giving them out to anybody. Without, um, unless they have a warrant. Unless by due process, which means that his duty then is to go to a judge, a judge with an affidavit saying, that over here, I believe, in this glove compartment are papers that are required to be given to me. The judge isn't going to do that, because <laughs> it isn't the law. Well, by then, and it is not a crime. Way. <laughs> yeah. So, when we require that, and you stand on that, and my understanding even more today is from this person that in the last stop that I had, I, I gave an identification card, but it wasn't a state identification card. So I was giving an identification to them, so I didn't need to be doing even that. I don't have to identify myself. That's my property, my identification. And you need to stand on that. Well, And you, you de maintain it. Yeah, and it comes down to you have the right to be secure in your personal effects, but you also have the right to not give information that could be used against and you. And that's your first of all. Yeah, your fifth. fifth amendment. Yeah. Fifth and your first yeah. to speak. Or yeah. not to speak or not to speak. Well, yeah. your name can be used against you. The first thing on the ticket is Christopher Lyons or whoever the name is. It's the name. So they're looking for a name to put on a piece of paper to use against you. Or whatever. They're looking for insurance. Well, there's a good possibility that I got a, you got a warrant in another state. Not me. You might. Oh. But well, if you, oh, but what, possibly so you somebody might. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? Uh, you, you have the right not to give information that could be used against you. Yeah. yeah. And if you, if somebody has a warrant in another state, and there's case law to uphold it, where the judge rules you, know, you don't have to Unless, give your name because it could be used against you, and you could be arrested. So. And so most stops are, they're Terry stops. They're called. They're just fishing for information. An easy hundred bucks. So, uh, yeah, they can, 
they'll be looking for this information, but am I required to give you information that might be used against me? I could be, I could have, uh, this information could be used against me in another place or another state or from another state. So you maintain their rights and then you kind of invite them to, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so that was the la my last ticket was... Uh, by, about well, it was about a, high, a highway patrolman pulled me over for, and he said he, I was doing 10 over, but he immediately was asking me for the typical license, registration, proof of insurance, and I said, well, I'm not driving, so why would I give you a driver's license? He looks at me with this, I don't know, right. as well, your registration, well, it's in the glove compartment. But uh, I'm going to maintain my my right, my Fourth Amendment right to my person, my papers, my property, and my effects. So what about your insurance? Well, that's in there too. So are you going to protect, officer, my right? So, but I did give him, what I failed to do was I did offer him an identification card which didn't have my middle name in it. He made a note of that, that this doesn't have a middle name. So when we have our identification cards and they have a middle name, or the all three names, that's generally how they identify you. They got those three opportunities. You know, you got the middle, it wouldn't be Gary George, and this, this one's Gary James, and, and uh, there could be many Lionses, but but not always a Gary and a James. Well, yeah, even the <coughs> state law. I even had an officer tell me, because sometimes I've been stopped and they just, oh, you're Chris Lines, I heard right. And they just talked to me for like, in the cold for <laughs> half an hour. Anyways, and he was telling me the same thing. Oh, yeah, well, you don't have to give anything but two things, your name and your date of birth. He's like, that's all the information even the RCWs require from you, which that's the, RCW. that's the RCWs. That's not the Constitution or case law. You don't have to give them any information, but even by their statutes, they only need two things. Name, date of birth is what they're after. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, Sorry. the last ticket here was uh, I got pulled over, so he did that. He went back and started searching, but I was thinking of this, that... Uh, if I'm off on the side of the road and he wants to uh, take me in because I'm not going to show him my driver's license because you don't have I don't have to and I told him I wasn't driving even though he insisted we were sitting in the driver's seat. No, I'm sitting in a traveler's seat. How about that? And I had a passenger with me. Which is a guest. Which is not a passenger, it's actually a guest. If you look but, up the definitions of the words, it does make a difference yeah. as to what you're doing. So he's going to, okay, so he's, he's back there doing his job, but I was thinking, you know, I don't really like being in this position right here off the side of the road, because if they won't let me, quotes, unquote, according to their laws, drive, and I, or, and I want to travel off, they're not going to let me back in that car. And the fellow who was next to me didn't have a driver's license because he asked him, do you have a driver's license? No. Well, we're going to have a problem here. So I jutted, I took, started the car when he was behind me and I crossed the road over into a parking lot next, across the road. I crossed a double yellow line into the parking lot and they, he came over and pulled right behind me and I started stepping out of the car and he says, Mr. Or he said, no, you stay in the car. Stay in the car. And he called back up, and you know, I had two other officers pull up. <clears throat> and he said, he and I, I got out of the car anyway. I didn't, didn't follow his orders. He didn't pay attention to me. And in some cases, they would have... Uh, <laughs> they would have uh, uh, really dealt with this because they would consider that driving away. Or, you know, that would be almost an arrestable offense. He, they did, he ignored that totally and completely. He says, you're on camera. Well, good, we're on camera. So he put, put one of the cars over in a position and they cocked it over. When it's all done and over with, I went to the courthouse 
and the uh, ticket that was not legible. Not yeah, legible. the guy's ticket that he wrote was so unlegible because he was just shaking. That's why I asked him later, uh, "You know who I am, or something?" Yeah, I've heard of you. <laughs> it was so unlegible, I couldn't read his signature. I couldn't even read my name that he wrote up at the top, and any numbers and any information. He gave it to another officer to help him fill out some of the in-between stuff. But then on the other hand, he did a, an affidavit, which wasn't an affidavit, in eight and a half by 11, he did his description of what occurred. He only put the driver, the license number of the car, he did not put his name or what my name was, and he didn't sign it at the bottom. He didn't even put his name down. And in there he stated that I asked for my Fourth Amendment right to be protected. And uh, that was about all. So far I filed into the paper, into the, uh, into the court, some papers. I wrote a letter to the judge, personal letter to the judge. I sent it certified mail to her. <laughs> and I told her, you know, I, I understand and know that I've gone to manta.com, M-A-N-T-A, and discovered that you run a business here. And in the manta.com, which is similar to Dun & Bradstreet, you run a business. For you have, profit. Yeah, it's a for-profit business. Publicly traded. Yeah. And, yes, stocks. County. And that you're the CEO. Well, the, the original CEO was another Pamela Payne, and now you're the, the new in, incumbent CEO of this profitable business. It says how many employees there are on it, and it says approximately how many, how much you make per year. And I, and I wrote a letter, basically a lawful notification letter, uh, letting her know that, you know, uh, she has a duty to follow the law and to protect my rights. And I don't have any uh, contract with State of, of Washington or the Highway Patrol to obey their laws. I, I told her, I'm going to drive the way I want to travel, or travel down the road at the speed I, I wish to travel. And as long as I'm not hurting anybody or injuring in anybody, your laws don't uh, uh, have anything to do with me. And I said, just as, as um, if I walk into McDonald's and it says you need to wear a hairnet and you need to wash your hands, I'm not going to do it because I don't have to do it. I'm not an employee. I don't work for the state of Washington. I'm not an employee. I'm not an agent. And so I did an affidavit of that fact, too, that I'm not an agent or an employee. And I handed this, you know, gave this to her. Plus, I also took these papers. Those I, I sent to her personally with her name on it, return receipt. Then I sent into the court my... Uh, the same documents, filed them in the document, went downstairs and went to the prosecutor, filed those with the prosecutor. And the last thing was, 30 days later, the uh, court clerk says, yeah, I brought this to the attention of the judge, asked her what she was going to do with it, and she just waved her says, well, let's forget this. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. So she says, I don't know. The judge is just kind of like waving off. But one of the things I've done with it is, I've made the judge because, see, the prosecutor is not going to bring this action. Now, who's going to bring the action? The judge is an impartial party. Supposed the judge to be. is just sitting there judging between two parties that are at odds with each other. Well, there's no other party now. There's just him <laughs> and a judge who's impartial. Who now is impartial because I wrote her a personal letter. <laughs> So there's no there's no matter before the court. There's one guy coming in and saying, oh, I thought that I was being accused of something. And there's no one there saying, yeah, you're being accused. Because the judge is just an impartial party. That's her job, is to be impartial. Yeah, so I don't know how she's going to deal with it. But anyways, yeah. And the same with you. You have an off judge in Montana, Montana who you've been carrying on with, and you've been asking her even over the phone. Yeah. We've been talking to her over the phone. I talked to her one time. He talks to her on the phone and is asking, come on, well, do you understand? Well, I filed <laughs> all these documents that she didn't answer, you know, an affidavit, affidavit of status, uh, other affidavits, <coughs> and there was a court date that I was supposed to be there by. Well, I just ignored it. She said, and I had talked to her on the phone, oh, no, I'm going to file a warrant. If you're not here on that day, I'm going to file a bench warrant. <laughs> Whatever. I filed all these documents, and uh, 
So the court date came and gone. So she writes me another letter. If you're not here on this next court date, I'm going to file a bench warrant, she said. So I call her again. And, and uh, she picks up the phone. The first. Visit. She's the only one there. It's some little <laughs> town in Montana. It's like... She's she's the clerk, she's the judge, she's the prosecutor, yeah. I think. And so I wrote her all these letters, and I'm like, you know, do you have an oath of office? Actually, you do, and here's a copy of it. You're swearing to uphold the Constitution and protect it above, you know, whatever. Everything. And my rights, protect them. And she, uh, and I, so I talked to her, and do you, are you going to honor your oath? Oh, yes, yes, I'm going to honor my oath of office. And I'm like, she said, well, well, you could recuse me. I'm like, oh, no, no, if you're going to follow, if you're going to honor your oath of office, I, I want you. I want you to be the judge. I don't want another judge. I know that you're going to follow it, and you say you will, and I want one that will. And she said, okay. And she, we were talking for a while, and she, um, just talking about those ideas, same ideas that, well, there's no prosecutor. Who is the prosecutor? And she said, Oh, well, I can forward the stuff to the city prosecutor as if she's like kind of just the agent to help prosecute it in the meantime when there's no matter before the court. So anyway, she tried to... Well, the question would be, would be she would try be trying to initiate with the prosecutor, which would be yeah, prejudicing herself exactly. right there. She's, she's being biased. And I asked her, well, you're unbiased and... and Fair. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I have no. I have no care in this matter about what happened. So, so then after that, I just went ahead and filed the lawful notification letter to her. You know, stating all the things she did. And then she was demanding that I prove that I'm innocent. She was like, "You got to bring that. You, you got to bring into court proof that you have insurance." Because I had gotten a new truck, and so. It was two days before that I got in the truck, so I hadn't gotten the insurance card in the mail yet. And so I didn't have it in there. And uh, anyway, so they were trying to get me for no insurance. So she said, well, you need to bring into court proving that you haven't. Said, well, the burden of proof isn't upon me to prove my innocence. I'm innocent. The Constitution says until proven guilty. So you're demanding that I prove my innocence? No, you're going to prove me guilty, or the prosecutor, but... Anyway, so I wrote that in the lawful notification letter, like, the judge violated my due process laws yet again by demanding I prove my innocence without due process. And it went through the whole thing. And I still haven't heard anything, so <laughs> we're waiting. She hasn't answered her lawful notification letter, and it says at the bottom, if you don't answer it, then 20. 21 days. You agree with everything. Well, it's well past that, so. And you, and you warn her. We warn them. That they're being scrutinized for a, a violation of your rights. rights. Yeah. They're going to start thinking. And I think the way we approach with this op judge, which is sort of a... It's like a sort of friendly but firm <laughs> letter. She's, mm -hmm. she's like getting educated. <coughs> that, oh, well, you know, maybe rights are a little more, more than I think, you know. Because she can't just go put a warrant out on her own volition. That's like saying talking to herself and saying, uh, I verify it and swear under uh, oath that uh, I believe this person's committed a crime. I believe. And then she, she signs the ticket or the, the, the warrant. That's, we're, we're talking to her about this. Do you see the, oh, and the I nonsense also, in this? I judge? also told her that I also charged her with acting in two branches of government, executive and judicial, because she's acting as the prosecutor and the judge, <clears throat> which is... I don't know. It was Impossible. Like, well, it's it was like a <laughs> some felony of some sort, and I can't remember. It's on the the fee schedule, and it's like a million dollar fine or something. Oh, you showed her that. I can't remember what it is, but so, and I sent her the fee schedule and everything, so she could look at all the. If there's more than five of these things at one time, then that's Tree? treason. So <laughs> that's another one, and then if there's another one, it's like goes down to where she's in like a five million dollar lawsuit, possibly. <laughs> so it's something to her to think about right before Christmas. She wants a little town, little town of Haver. Ma, I have her, Montana, five million dollars. What, what, what would just give us the little town? Well, and she has a bond. The bond is 
That's what her bond is for, is so when she violates my rights, I can sue her bond. Mm -hmm. That's why she has a bond. Mm -hmm. So I sent her a copy of that, too. But anyway. I think it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to educate them. <laughs> They're getting educated, a few of them. If we can go around our country and everybody start doing this, maybe we can start having some freedom again. <laughs>